Hello guys, so welcome to the Mail Theory channel. Uh, this is Sai, and today's topic is Azure Dev Test Labs. So in this video, you will be learning what is Dev Test Lab. And why do you need these dev test labs? And what are different tasks you can perform using this dev test lab? And how can you use this Azure dev test lab in your daily DevOps? projects okay now what is dev test lab in azure the first point is it is a service create, manage, infrastructure, infrastructure, that is IaaS as a service and also you can also create path services, platform as a service, environments. as a lab so the definition is quickly it is a service to create manage infrastructure as a service pass in environments as a lab right now if we say about lab normally we know that we create labs for r d research and development how this labs will offer you know it's a pre-configured architectures it can be both IaaS or pass when we talk about architectures right when you talk about architectures, it can be creating IaaS VMs, it can be creating web apps for PaaS services, right? Or any other kind of a SharePoint farm in environments. So the whole idea, what we call it as a, the common scenarios to use this dev test labs are include dev VMs environment testing VMs environment right or any kind of a training lab for teams or maybe from developers okay so the reason why it is you have all these things so that you can have a, a complete control okay All right, so so if you look at this common scenario, so we have a dev uh, VMs and environment, we have a testing uh, environments, and we have training labs for teams. So all these things is to have more 
controlled in terms of you know uh, budget right in terms of redefined environments artifacts all those things now i would like to also explain few other topics for example like you know um the other scenarios where you will use is as i said you know we already discussed about development environment consider an example where you want to uh, spin up a an environment with the custom images custom images and you know or maybe your templates where you want to provision some 3 to 4 vms with specific windows or linux combination right so it requires a lot of efforts normally if you want to spin up a this kind of an environment right you need a resource group you need a vm images you need um, you know storage accounts you need any license right and all those things and you need approvals and all that so that requires a little bit of research like you know, when you talk about uh, vm images you need to again figure out it's a 2016 or 2019 what service packs hot fixes and if it is linux the next box it is a red hat you want or ubuntu or some other right uh, debian so which which again on this which which service pack or which uh, security pack you require and all those things it requires a lot of research normally but imagine you have a uh, a ready made environment right which is completely easy to easy to deploy using in just few clicks right either using artifacts using pipelines maybe using github repos right and any other templates form or maybe you can call it as arm template so that is where the azure uh, dev test labs come into the picture now let's quickly go back to the where we started and quick do a recap so we started with so we started with the topic what is dev test lab why do you need this what tasks you can perform and how this is useful in your daily devops project now if you talk about what is dev test lab we said it is a service which helps you to create manage infrastructure as a service and even pass any environments as a lab right to perform any r and d's or any testing with the predefined artifacts architects right using any vm combination or web app combination or any sharepoint any other right now why do you need this so in order to build any dev environments any testing environments training labs like more controlled and budget controlled environments right predefined environments to speed up the the whole provisioning uh, uh, orchestration 
and other scenarios as i said you know uh, you can have a, 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 a custom images right so now quickly go back to the and let's see how can we create a now on the azure portal right you will go ahead and create a check the, um, the the services part here just type just type um, dev you see dev test labs right when you click on dev test labs it load dev test currently um, i think i already have some uh, dev test lab so when you create a dev test lab it, it it shows like this the status and any tags you have what is the location what is the subscription you have it shows but let's create a quickly a new uh, uh, so we click on create okay so it, it loads with the some settings so the basic settings right under basic settings it will ask for your subscription details okay and any resource group you need to mention the name of the lab and what is the region you have right and it is public environment on and off that you know outside your and outside your uh, company or anyone can access from the outside you can also have auto shutdown on and off for the vm so that you know to save the the budget and to keep the networking default and you can also have one more option called isolate lab resources sorry guys okay isolate uh, lab resources so that you know uh, more uh, a secured environment and you can add any tags you want here okay now if i'm not creating anything let's go back to my test uh, uh, this thing which i already created i said now I'll go to the test and open this one and explain for you now once you created the uh, dev test lab so you will see all these options like one is see under my lab these are all the where important you should focus one is claimable vms we'll talk about all resources my vms my environments my data disk my secrets personal data okay now currently i don't have any vms okay now let's see how many uh, what are the different environments we can go and create using this I'll click on my environments now my environments um, we have i click on add so you see here automatically it shows how many what are different uh, we can have a service fabric cluster from you know microsoft sorry yeah we need to yeah so these are all various environments we can spin up like the web app with mysql postgl sql uh, sql database and lab cluster and it is a simple it is a web app so that's why it's not showing any any os here okay this is not this is the pass services right this is a pass but if you want to provision the vm i'll go back and go to the my virtual machines now here click on information click on add now it will give you a lot of options here see it's asking you can go ahead and choose what image you want okay i think i will yeah so it, can, it is asking which base image you want now you can see we have all the other options like you know along with the pass these are all ias you can see the os now so these are all like ias vms right yeah you will be having uh, windows also if I scroll down yeah these are all windows see Ubuntu again the next Oracle the next CentOS yeah you have Windows Enterprise 7 10 all these Visual Studio right so you can create any environment you want using SQL environments you can select any any uh, Windows you know any image you want okay so this is what it is I'll quickly go back here now even when you're creating the environment okay i'll select and i'll select some environment 
this is okay uh, not an error message so i'll go to the my virtual machines click on add i want to show you something here that's why so i think it, it's taking time to, to a bit low okay now i just want to select some vm random vm okay now here once i select any vm okay so look at the options we have now so it's asking for the username right and the virtual machine size yeah it's asking for the virtual machine size here okay and any artifacts see it's been saying that you can connect your artifacts what do you mean by connecting artifacts so I click on add artifacts here so so let's see understand what are the options so artifacts here we can connect to azure pipelines agent here you can connect chef docker container mongodb and the list goes on node.js and any packages so these are already built-in installed artifacts you can directly connect if i click on here right so I currently i don't have any artifacts here otherwise if you have any artifacts defined so it will automatically show those artifacts here so there is a you can already connect the artifacts installed on the vm and uh, it will be automatically installed on the on that vm while deploying okay so that is how you will have this predefined configuration um, that is what the idea is called predefined configurations for vm environments okay like this any other packages jdks and all those things okay so that is what is about the artifacts now quickly understand what is the configuration and policies here under the right so currently i don't have anything because you can always look at the activities here okay what is happening who is doing what like you know add modify delete right you know user profiles so you can always download as a csp Right, and you can review who performed, which user is performing all these activities like initiated by, right? So that is one more um, important thing. Right, even you can also see here under the, um, so you can also see something called as allowed VM sizes. So you can and allow VM users, missions per user per lab the lab settings so these are very important because guys right so these are very very important because this is where you will control your whole lab right a user cannot spin more than two vms or user cannot spin up m series or n series vms you can only you can only use some a series or f series or ds series right and user can only spin you can make it like two or two to three vms and vms per lab not more than five so those kind of uh, rules you can configure automatically for example like you can click on this so you can have a limit here right so you can set a limit similarly when for user allowed machines similarly enable click on enable and select enable it, it's loading sorry it's loading yeah now i'll select vm whatever size is i want and right something like i click on save right so those are the only can only provision you can you can optimize these things depending upon you know whatever your um, and lab settings the lab settings right so i think it's still 
going to load yeah so under the lab settings we have other uh, this thing like you know default uh, uh, all vm should be in one resource group so that it's easy and you know what kind of user access you can contribute to a reader so that they cannot delete modify any vms or anything and uh, connection speed the gateway and everything you can configure depending upon your um, the the network configurations i'm not talking about all that and the other quickly the last point i want to convert is the uh, lab announcement you can send a notification automatically configure that hey the expiration of this lab is so and so days maybe a one week maybe two weeks three weeks depending upon whatever the uh, the users and you can you can have your message here send it okay and the browser connect the browser connect is i want to connect using a browser okay i don't want to use a vm or whatever so you can enable this browser connect okay and uh, you can give that url to the uh, uh, to, to the user so that is one important uh, feature so so far what we discussed i think i would like to give a quick quick overview of you guys okay and uh, go back here so Now we understood, right? So we talked about how exactly uh, what is the uh, the lab part, why you need this, the tasks you can perform, and how can users daily. As I said, you can connect various artifacts, and you can configure your dev testing environments uh, within just a couple of clicks, right? And you can also make sure that as a DevOps admin, you have all the control of all these uh, environments. And you can also set up an auto delete, auto delete of the environments and send a notification to the user. And you can also look into the uh, the, the logs, who is performing what, what some some user is trying to uh, you know uh, trying to kill the environment or doing uh, the the actual project activities or not. So that is how the Azure DevOps test labs will be useful, guys. And uh, if you have any questions, please use the the comment section. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. And this is Sai signing off for the day. And I'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching and have a nice day ahead.